Rav Galinsky found himself at the end of the war going from concentration camp to concentration camp to try and find the Jewish kids to sign up to schools. And in some places they found two children, and in some they found three children, and in some they found five, and finally he gets to one place that had more children than any other place that he'd been to. The man that sent him on this mission, mission was Rav Gershon Liebman, a rock that got the, the funds from uh, the various Hatzalah organizations to be able to start Jewish education again. And he went from place to place to try and gather the children. Oh, he finally gets to this one place, okay? He finally gets to this one place. Has more kids than any of the other places, and he's so excited. And comes to the man in charge, and he says, I'm here to bring these Jewish kids to a yeshiva. And the man says, who sent you? Tell me it was anyone but the Agoda. I hate the Agoda. Anyway, he knows that some of the funds come from the Agoda. He goes, no, I wasn't sent by the Agoda. I was sent by someone, by an individual. It was true. And the man says, yes, but who's funding that individual? Tell me it's not the Agoda. I hate the Agoda. He says, no, I'm, a, I'm an emissary of Hashem. He says, tell me the truth. Who sent you? He says, Rav Gershon Lidman. The man's face and demeanor changed instantly. He says, if that's who sent you, not only am I not going to get in your way, I will get you every single child signed up. Whatever you need, you'll have. And Rav Galinsky says, what brought about this unbelievable change? And he says, I'll tell you, I remember. I remember back in the day when we were all in the camp together and I had Rav Gershon living in my bunk, in my barracks. And you know what it was like back then. There was no food. People were dying, not of gas or shootings. They were dying because they had no nutrition left in their veins, in their bones. They couldn't get themselves up out of bed to wait online for a cup of soup and a slice of bread. And they died in their bunks, exhausted. Not from a hit, not from gas, not from a bullet. From pure starvation and exhaustion beyond which the human body could not manage. And I remember one morning, he says, there was a young boy, a great young boy, a yeshiva boy whose name was Avram Rosalimsky. And the day came when he came back from the work and he couldn't get up off the bed. And they told him, come, you need to get up off the bed. You need to get the food. If you don't eat, you're going to die. Push yourself. And he couldn't, he just couldn't. He says, just go. We all felt terrible, but we had our own life story about it. So we went, we ate it online, and every one of us came back with a cup of soup and a, a little piece of bread. And we had, most of us had finished it on the way back to the barracks, but some of us managed to eat it there, sitting there. Everyone but one person, everyone but Rabbi Yerusha Lidman, who came back from waiting online, and who took Avram Rosalimsky, who could barely sit up, and he leaned him against the wall. And he started spooning the soup into his mouth. He was so weak, he couldn't even keep his mouth open. So the soup was running down his chin, spilling onto his body. The precious soup was getting lost. And then he took the bread and he couldn't chew and he took little pieces and he helped him push his mouth up and down so he could chew and swallow the bread. He says, I watched Rav Gershon Lippmann go hungry that day, a day when not one of us had the luxury of taking a day off from food. And he gave everything for someone else. That's who sent you. Whatever you need, you'll have. And I thought to myself when I read this, I don't know for sure, because I wasn't there, Baruch Hashem, none of us were. But I dare say that at the end of that day, Rav Gershon Lidman went to bed with more energy flowing through his veins from having fed someone else than from having fed himself.